Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's Meeting of the Minds webinar. Today, we're going to be discussing the A to Z's of Arizona's quest to become a smart city tech hub. Thanks for joining us. Um, during each webinar, we take a short reading on who's joined us. So you'll see a poll pop up now, which asks you which sector best defines you. If you could just answer that, that helps us to see who's in the room with us. My name is Jesse Feller-Hahn, and I'm the Executive Director of Meeting of the Minds. As many of you know, Media of Minds is a global thought leadership network and platform for knowledge sharing with year-round digital and in-person programming. We connect global urban sustainability, innovation, and technology leaders across sectors to share best practices, tools, and solutions through our blog, available at meaningofthemines.org, monthly webinar series, and more than 20 in-person events each year. Our next in-person event is in Cleveland next week, actually on September 26th focused on how anchor institutions are partnering with startups. So if you're in the Bay Area tomorrow, we'll be gathering at the Sacramento Urban Sustainability Meetup from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m., so join us. More info on all of that is available at meetingofminds.org. Today's webinar is very much a preview into topics and tools we will be discussing at our 12th annual Fall Leadership Summit, which convenes in Sacramento from November 27th to 29th. Registration is open, and we will sell out by the end of next month, so grab your spot while spaces are still available if you'd like to join us. Scholarships are available for public sector leaders, nonprofit executives, entrepreneurs, and academics to attend all of our events throughout the year, and you can find more information about our scholarship program in the footer of our homepage at meetingofminds.org. A few housekeeping notes to begin. Because of our very large audience in attendance today, you will remain muted throughout the event. Today's slides and a recording of today's webinar will be available on our website after the event for you to share with colleagues that couldn't make it today. You can actually find both Dominic and Scott's slides in the handout panel in the bottom of the control panel to the right of your screen already, if you want to take a look at those or download those. And um, we will have a Q&A during the second half of the hour. When you have a question, please type them into the questions panel in your attendee control panel when you as you think of them. We'll be sure to get um, get those questions to Dominic and Scott and get your questions answered. So let's see those poll results. Great. Lots of private sector, actually the highest I've maybe ever seen, <laughs> 67%, public sector 15%, and then a small amount of nonprofit philanthropy and academics. Um, <coughs> and that may change as we get some more folks in the room in, in the next five minutes. Thanks so much for everybody, that's helpful. Um, we would appreciate your input regarding today's webinar, so a short survey will pop up when you close your browser at the end of the event. We appreciate you filling that out. We're always working to improve our webinars. We've been doing these every month for almost seven years, so always looking to improve. Um, I'm pleased to introduce our two presenters today, though, so let's get, let's get to the core of it. <laughs> Dominic Papa is the executive director and co-founder of the Institute for Digital Progress a nonprofit organization designed to transform Arizona into a global hub of smart city IoT technology driven by collaborative civic innovation. We also have Scott Stallard, who's the CTO of Atonix Digital, a new Black & Veatch company, and leads the development and commercialization efforts for the Asset360 platform, which powers industry-leading analytic solutions for utilities, businesses, and smart cities. These solutions address the challenges and opportunities prompted by increased operational complexity, widespread adoption of digital technologies, big data, and major transformation occurring across virtually all asset-centric industries. So without further ado, I'll pass the ball to Dominic. Great, thanks, Jesse. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm excited to speak to you all today about a first-of-its-kind public-private nonprofit partnership to build what we're calling the Greater Phoenix Smart region. As Jesse mentioned, the Institute for Digital Progress, or IDP, is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Now, we established IDP to be the region's civic technology do tank, to be the implementation partner for governments and empower them to launch the practical application of technology within their communities. I'm talking about initiatives that can make a real impact for real people. When we first started IDP, the Greater Phoenix region appeared to be the perfect location for a civic technology do tank. Maricopa County, which is situated within the Greater Phoenix region, consists of more than 22 separate cities and towns with an aggregate population that consistently causes it to fluctuate between the third and fourth most populous county in the United States. 
It's home to multiple premier universities and Fortune 500 companies. It was identified as the fastest growing county in the nation by the U.S. Census Bureau in 2017. It consistently attracts millions of tourists from across the world on an annual basis. Nowhere else in the country are there so many large and economically comparable cities clustered so close together. <laughs> and yet when we set out on our mission, we took a look across the ecosystem in Greater Phoenix and we were confronted with this. Silos. Well, <laughs> actually, I guess that is no longer the politically correct term I've been told. Uh, I guess silos tend to have a kind of negative connotation. I believe the preferred term being used now is cylinders of excellence. Uh, so we really we quickly realized that we were dealing with I mean cylinders of excellence of excellence across sectors and across jurisdictions. Um, at the same exact time, we were seeing what Columbus was able to do by winning the DOT Smart City Grant through cross sector collaboration. We also started to see other cities accelerate to the forefront of smart cities technology. Dallas launching the Dallas Innovation Alliance, USC establishing the IoT Consortium, and our good friend Bob Bennett kicking all of our butts in Kansas City with the Smart Kansas City initiatives. So we started to ask ourselves, how are we going to compete against these leading, leading smart cities who already, already have such a huge head start on us? Then we realized our opportunity, our competitive advantage. It lay at the heart of who we were and what our region was and is. Maricopa County is the fourth largest county, the fastest growing in population. We're home to some of the world's top technology companies. We have a vibrant entrepreneur ecosystem, and we have a welcoming political and regulatory climate for technology. If that wasn't enough, we have the nation's largest public research institution in Arizona State University. The university that's engineering school is larger than the entirety of MIT itself and has been ranked number one in innovation for four consecutive years. So we thought to ourselves, what if we harness the power of our region, create a new culture of collaboration, one centered on innovation and technology? If we could get our region to think together, act together, innovate together on smart initiatives, we could create a smart region and outscale everyone else around the country that was focused at city level. And so the Greater Phoenix Smart Region Initiative was born. It is a public-private nonprofit partnership formed between the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, the Arizona State University Center for Smart Cities and Regions, and IDP. Together with 22 communities from the Greater Phoenix region, the Smart Region Initiative will act as a collaborative research and implementation partnership to drive the creation, advancement, and adoption of the latest and most beneficial smart city technologies, which improve the quality of life for the citizens and visitors within our communities in the region. You know, I heard a wise man once say that if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. That wise man was Jack Black in Kung Fu Panda. It's a great film, you gotta see it. But in all honesty, the Greater Phoenix Smart Region Initiative is about going far. It's about building a sustainable model that will ingrain a legacy of innovation, sustainability, and collaboration for future generations. You know I, know, I think we all know on this call that smart cities use technology to solve city challenges, from issues like transportation and congestion management to citizens' health and well-being and access to services. Smart cities also reduce costs, drive new revenue streams, and spur economic development. The smartest of these understand that it's not a single project that makes them smart, Rather, it is the process of using these technologies to continually improve government efficiency, enhance citizen well-being, and solve complex problems. So consequently, cities across the globe are striving to become this next premier smart city, engaging in what I like to call a new kind of 21st century arms race to be crowned the premier smart city in the world. However, a single smart city without the ability to connect itself to the surrounding region is bound to itself alone. It cannot optimize the comparative advantages both within and without their jurisdictional boundaries. So in order to compete at the global level, accelerate solutions to real urban challenges and enhance the quality of life and well-being for all residents, the Greater Phoenix Smart Region Initiative is being formed to build a system and framework that takes the approach of the smartest cities and leverages the scale and testing capabilities of our entire region. 
The smart region plays to the region's legacy of collaboration to build a system that strengthens and enhances existing smart city approaches. The smart region operates by producing technology solutions and research that benefit communities. Both community and industry-driven R&D are at the center of our smart region business model. The revenue generated by industry and public membership or by reduced costs, greater efficiencies, and new revenue streams is reinvested in, back into the smart region initiative through research, workforce development, and implementation programs to advance our smart region vision. Through the creation and enablement of the smart region, our partner communities will be provided the framework and tools to cultivate internal and external innovation, galvanize collaborative action, engage cross-sector stakeholders, employ data-driven decision-making, and bring their own smart city initiatives from blueprint to reality. I'm gonna note that on this graphic, there are two key processes missing from this image. They are workforce development and research. These are in the process of being added. Um, and so today I just, I wanted to walk through with you the framework and show you how this framework is designed to accelerate our pathway to implementation. A smart city, a smart region is naturally predicated on smart people. Smart cities run on digital networks and cities of all sizes, demographics and locales depend on a public sector workforce educated to design, build, and operate these next generation networks. With the rapid evolution of technologies such as IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning, drones, and autonomous vehicles, there'll be an ever increasing number of high skill in-demand jobs across all levels of government as a result of these innovations. Now, historically, there have not been enough public sector employees with the expertise to manage both the intricate and complex digital networks required to become a truly smart city. However, our region is ready to take up that challenge. So together through the Smart Region Initiative, we are making a commitment to develop the public sector workforce of the future. The Smart Region Workforce Development Programs will provide high-end training to public sector employees at all levels within the greater Phoenix region. The goal is to, the goal is to facilitate public sector employees in acquiring and augmenting the skills and competencies to effectively address digitalization for the benefit of their communities, delivering on the promise of digitalization while mitigating the uncertainty and risks associated with that digitalization. The Smart Region Initiative has developed three specific Smart Region Education programs, each aimed at building the necessary skills for different levels and job functions of city employees. The Academy for Smart Cities is designed to teach high-level government employees strategic foundations and, and tactics for leading their communities through the Smart City Revolution. The Network Academy is aimed at strengthening and building the technical skills required to operate and maintain new technology solutions. And the Public Entrepreneur Development Academy is a project-based program where high potential employees will both learn and apply entrepreneurial problem-solving skill sets to the development and implementation of new technology solutions to solve a real-life regional issue. Each of our participating communities will be provided a specific number of seats on an annual basis for each of the three programs. At the end of the five years, over 1,000 public sector workers within the greater Phoenix region will be educated through these programs. Now, what makes our public-private nonprofit model unique is the nonprofit community partners sitting at the heart of this initiative. We understand that each of the stakeholders has their own motivations and incentives for participating in the smart region, and each will derive their own benefits from it. However, those will always be secondary to the main goal of improving the quality of life for all residents and visitors in Greater Phoenix. A true smart region is built from the bottom up, built by the people, for the people, and so the people will always remain at the heart of this initiative, and we will bring the stakeholders together to advance solutions to real issues that they face. Therefore, the Smart Region Initiative is about intentionally collaborating with regional partners to adopt and scale solutions that transform Greater Phoenix. The Smart Region will bring together all 22 of our Greater Phoenix communities, which make up the Greater Phoenix Region, together with industry leaders from private sector and researchers from the university in order to, in order to collaboratively embark on this innovative journey to unlock the power of smart city technology together. The goal here is really to kind of align these digital roadmaps and view technological improvement from a macro region-wide scale 
to create the country's largest and most connected smart region, aimed at improving the lives of all citizens and visitors which live, work, and play in the greater Phoenix smart region. Now, a real smart region needs to start with the communities in our collective problems, rather than looking immediately at that smart technology for answers. Through the many conversations we've been having with our communities around the smart region, we realize our biggest difficulty right now lies in our inability to clearly elucidate our collective challenges, identify strategic opportunities, and build consensus on key priorities for the regions. In order to solve the issue, Arizona State University and IDP will craft a smart region digital roadmap to be completed during the month of October. The roadmap will kickstart the smart region initiative and will accelerate our path to implementation. Through the roadmap, a set of region-wide key priorities will be developed to encompass the most pressing issues that we're facing. The roadmap will then align the necessary components and resources around those key priorities. This process will enable ASU and IDP to present smart region relevant concepts to decision makers, outline these potential initial solutions, and propose concepts of the smart region initiative to elicit the necessary buy-in from our key stakeholders to really move these ideas from blueprint to reality. Through this unified approach, we're gonna be able to not only identify the best opportunities that exist today, but we'll be able to determine the most beneficial technologies to support together. By providing the workforce development programs and the regional convening, the Smart Region Initiative is attempting to lay the fundamental groundwork to allow for the creation of tangible, implementable solutions to real life issues across the greater Phoenix region. The Smart Region at its core is an action-oriented initiative. The ultimate goal is implementing solutions at scale, which will directly improve the quality of life for our citizens. So in order to do so, regional opportunity projects will be identified from the key priorities of the roadmap, the workforce programs, the research initiatives, and the Arizona Urban Eyelab programs, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Appropriate resources and tools will be provided for development proof of concept and implementation of pr proposed regional opportunity projects. Once again, just to hit on this, you know, a real smart region needs to start with the problems, start with our communities and start with our issues. Demand-driven research is an integral part of the smart region initiative. This will be led by the ASU Center for Smart Cities and Regions, otherwise known to my academic friends as CENSORS. CENSORS mission is to advance urban and regional innovation make more inclusive, vibrant, resilient, and sustainable communities. Center fellows collaborate with researchers, policymakers, planners, entrepreneurs, industry, and public to enhance the ability of our cities and our region to responsibly use emerging technological infrastructures and improve the quality of our life. Leveraging resources across ASU, Center, in partnership with IDP, will create a portfolio of research designed specifically to support and advance the needs of the smart region and its communities. This will include, for example, generating ideas, methods, scenarios, networks, and spaces for collaboration, engagement, and other research products to enable sensor partners to leverage innovation, as well as the co-development of products, initiated uh, products, processes, and solutions. Where appropriate, pilot programs will be initiated on ASU campus or within the innovation sandboxes through the Arizona Urban iLabs program. A formalized deep funding program will be established by Sensor around this portfolio of work, and funding will be open to researchers from across ASU and designed in a way to encourage ASU researchers to collaborate with other members of the Smart Region Initiative, both public and private. Which brings us to validation and testing. You know, as a region, we needed a process to rapidly test and validate technology solutions as part of the regional opportunity projects. Furthermore, we needed a mechanism that encourages entrepreneurs, startups, and industry to test novel ideas which positively impact the lives of our residents. The Arizona Urban iLabs, a connected network of innovation sandboxes throughout the region, will provide the framework to design cities of the future and accelerate the development of next generation technologies, products, processes, and services. The Arizona Urban iLabs is designed to enable companies, entrepreneurs, universities, and researchers to come together, create unexpected relationships across sectors and disciplines to co-invent and co-produce new discoveries for the market. A key component of the Arizona Urban iLabs is the establishment of the innovation sandbox for each of our member communities. 
The Innovation Sandbox will be a defined process of engagement to facilitate the ability for a community to allow for the innovative demonstrations of technology. The Innovation Sandbox process will create a living lab environment where solutions can be proven using existing infrastructure, real data, and real scenarios. The Innovation Sandboxes will encourage entrepreneurs, startups, industry, and academia with ideas and new inventions to test them in a living city environment. The Innovation Sandbox will also provide our member communities with IoT infrastructure and actionable open data and developer-friendly platforms for emerging IoT innovations, which stimulates the creation of new startups and mobile applications, making a rapid impact on the local economy. The sandboxes will include an open and public test environment for beacons and sensors to kind of kickstart this local IoT economy. IDP and ASU will work together in tandem to establish innovation sandboxes across the greater Phoenix smart region, which will then be digitally connected to each other through data sharing, aggregation, and standardization. This urban iLab program was really designed by us to transform our region into this region-wide platform for cities, entrepreneurs, innovators, researchers, and private sector businesses that seek to use our greater Phoenix region as R&D proof of concept and a commercialization testing grounds. And so shifting focus a little bit, well, after implementation, another primary goal um, of the Smart Region Initiative will be to provide resources to coordinate and facilitate best practice sharing across the greater Phoenix communities and Smart Region industry partners. Access to online tools will be granted to all community members where pilot programs and region initiative status and data will be viewable along with sensor research findings. The Smart Region Initiative will also publish a semi-annual Smart Region Progress Report and review deal detailing the latest Smart Region Initiative successes and failures and lessons learned. In addition to scaling proving solutions and best practices across the greater Phoenix Smart Region, IDP has partnered with multiple other smart communities across the country and across the globe through the Smart Gigabit Communities Initiative through US Ignite. Many of these communities are facing similar if not same issues and could potentially benefit from the solutions being developed in our region. IDP will work with proven technology solution providers to expand their solutions to additional interested communities, helping to continue to continue to grow their business into mature, stable, and sustainable companies. By creating this connected network of sandboxes buoyed by the comparative advantages in unique geographic and demographic landscape each community member has to offer, the Greater Phoenix Region will emerge as a connected cluster of centers of excellence, which will import talent and ideas and export new solution products and services. Once proven and approved, new solutions can be more easily implemented at scale in the member community and throughout the rest of our region. Additionally, by developing proposed solutions from a macro region-wide scale from the beginning and testing interoperability between jurisdictions during the proof of concept phases, these proven solutions will emerge from the iLab program more marketable and more ready for implementation across our entire region. The Smart Region partners are also working with state agencies to develop a Greater Phoenix Smart Region Cooperative Purchasing Agreement. Wow, that's a mouthful which will allow for member communities to utilize this agreement to meet the source selection and price reasonableness requirements for digital technology procurement. Once pilot programs are proven through the ILAS program, this will then allow interested cities to quickly and easily implement the proven solutions within the jurisdictional boundaries. The cities will benefit from greater purchasing power, economies of scale, administrative savings, interoperability across the region, increased technical expertise in the procurement process, as well as accelerate the opportunity for solutions to scale across the region. The model we are establishing is a smart region as a service because innovation agendas cannot and really must not stop at city limits. A smart region as a service approach represents the best recipe for digital inclusion and the scaling of relevant innovations for all communities, both large and small. It successfully lowers the threshold for smaller communities to enter the smart arena with regional collaboration serving as a key enabler for collective action. Smart region strategies do not simply enable a collective or smaller communities, however. They enable larger ones as well. Without placing smart city endeavors in a geographically larger regional context, many smart city initiatives end up severely limited in impact and relevance to the point they get rendered <laughs> not so smart. So in short, a smart region as a service empowers smart cities. 
The Smart Region as a Service is a dynamic model that will help transform us into an agile, implementation-oriented region. It allows us to think fast, act fast, test fast, and yes, even fail fast. Because through failure, we will learn, and we will go stronger, and we will be forced to innovate. A key component of this model is the ability to measure our progress. We are attempting to chart a path to a smarter future that requires involvement and coordination from many parties across various city organizations, extending to entities across the entire region. This level of coordination requires an approach to help prioritize, learn which investments deliver the strongest outcomes, and how they align with defined goals. We will need to be able to visualize how initiatives and strategies support the city and regional goals, and the ability to measure and define metrics at both the community and regional level in real time. This process will enable ASQ and IDP to present smart region relevant concepts to decision makers, outline potential solutions, and propose concepts of the smart region initiative to elicit the necessary buy-in from key stakeholders to move ideas from blueprint to reality. I'll let Scott talk a little bit more about the collaboration between IDP and Atonix that we've been working on to help us with this mission. So just to close out, I want to thank you all uh, for, for your time today. Honestly, the importance of the underlying goal of this bold new vision and partnership cannot be understated. This isn't about adopting the shiny new piece of cool looking technology. The technology is only the means to an end that is much, much larger and much, much more important than any one of us. The end is, and always will be, about providing a higher quality of life for all of our residents and visitors within our region. It's about closing the digital divide and making sure we are not leaving anyone behind. It's about ensuring our low income families and neighborhoods have access to internet because access to internet means access to information. And with information comes knowledge and with knowledge comes opportunity. It's about ensuring that our disadvantaged and disabled populations have access to smarter, more reliable public transportation options from the beginning. These are the sort of outcomes we seek to achieve through the Smart Region Initiative. We realize that this initiative must not rely on the leadership of one strong mayor or the passion of one visionary CIO. The importance of what we're building here in this region must stand the test of time and the test of political and administrative turnover. That is why we are building a new culture of collaboration in the greater Phoenix region, because we want to go far. And so we are choosing to go together. And so I'm challenging all of you today to become more involved in our effort and find ways in which you or your organization can collaborate with us and help us build America's largest and most connected smart region. Thanks a lot. Okay, over to Scott. Scott, take it away. All right, thank you very much. Um, as Dominic said, it's an exciting time to think about how some of these different ideas and programs and concepts come together. Um, I may have been now in the presence of someone who can actually speak faster than me. I'm not sure, Dominic, but while you you take a pause and you, and you catch your breath a little bit, I'll try to kind of to move back into kind of some of the key thoughts that were focused on there, which is and this nature of how do we take this idea of being smart and, and define it in the terms of how do we make smart decisions around what technologies to evoke, what initiatives to drive, how to look at alternative positions, how to understand, how to, to respect and see different positions and focus areas, and essentially address an extremely large and, and complex and yet really exciting range of opportunities, right? So in terms of Looking at it from an analytics perspective, this, this first slide kind of brings the notion or kind of captures the key points in the sense that we're looking at a regional strategy. A regional strategy is nothing without individual community strategies aligned and organized to focus on the region. And so it's got to work both from a bottom up and a top down, and we'll look at that, how that works. It's got to focus on planning to help people understand where the different options exist and what the better options are in terms of where money and resources are committed to and how those different components of, of the ecosystem that Dominic talked about, the different participants can all play, collaborate, and essentially grow the idea and the concept together. And then ultimately, uh, the last slide was really a key one, which is metrics-driven, analytics-driven, 
an approach for measuring in real time and over the course of time how progress can actually be measured, how we can see and understand what programs are doing, what initiatives are driving in terms of value, and then to basically adjust and adapt and evolve and go forward. So I think, you know, when you start trying to kind of demystify how do you think about this problem from an analytic perspective, I think, you know, first thing we want to do is we want to kind of focus on that, that top down or that strategic intent of understanding or envisioning outcomes of investments. You know, this notion of beginning with end in mind is probably not need as, not nearly as neat of a quote as Jack Black's quote. So I think Dominic upstaged me there. Uh, but the, the key is the same. The key is the notion that you really have to understand your destination, understand how the different pieces fit together. And analytics frameworks provides you the means for evaluating options, for looking at alternative definition of what the desired outcomes are, to look at what the targets are that would represent measures of success, to look at the timing associated with when those different outcomes might need to be or, or would be realized. Um, understanding the regional goals are based on the combination of the underlying individual communities and then yet may have an individual or an additive flavor in the sense there may be things done at the regional level that complements or um, extends the role of the community level activities. And then this idea of lenses, um, it's, it's a, a notion that we've had to incorporate in, in terms of the analytic vision in the sense of trying to manage both the complexity of the problem and also allow focus on the right areas when we're looking at specific areas, right? So different lenses are in our way of view or a logic of how we enable the planning or the strategy process to focus on different areas of emphasis, allow those areas to be evaluated as, as individual elements and yet be recombined or combined to see how it addresses or fits overall the overall objectives. So we're going to kind of walk into a prototype of how this type of a process could be evolved or envisioned for IDP or for the region. Uh, this prototype has a lot of information on the screen and, and you might expect that given the notion of the fact of the size and the complexity of the problem. So to kind of give you a sense of where to look and some of the areas I'm thinking about is if you focus on the left side, you'll see a hierarchy focusing on it's what, what now are, are looking at the target sets or the high level goals. And you'll notice that we have a regional set of goals and then we have a, a regions beneath that are representing the individual communities. I think it's important to understand that from an analytics perspective, we're looking at trying to address or focus on how the, the individual communities contribute to a region and yet provide individual communities the flexibility to extend or tailor the goals or the metrics to their particular needs. And so this particular slide here is really focused on the idea of what it would look like to start evolving goals across the multiple communities. And the idea of the, of the blue versus the gray would be essentially an ability to measure the progress in the strategy component, right? So gray being the work hasn't necessarily been initiated there with the blue being more focused on or, or more maybe more progress. So it kind of gives you a sense that this idea of collaboration doesn't have to be totally unified at the same time domain. There can be different rates of, of, of speed or different areas of focus within individual communities that can basically be assembled. If we kind of focus on a, a bit deeper down, now we've dropped into essentially a slide which focuses on the notion of what a, um, a set of goals and metrics might look like for a particular area, again, focusing at the regional level. So if you notice the, the cursor on the right is now we're in energy mobility targets, where we've defined targets for that particular set of goals to be focused on three dimensions, electric vehicles, energy efficiency, and renewables and storage penetration. These are, it's important to, to recognize that these are sample goal sets. These are target sets that have been established to define and illustrate the process. These are not representative IDP goal sets or necessarily the right ones for what the, the, the city of Phoenix or the region. So let's be, be sure we understand the context of what we're looking at here, but you can imagine that the, the lenses enable these goal sets to be defined and refined based upon different audience needs. There can be a continuous evolution. The focus is 
to how do we continue to adapt and evolve our targets and our targets as to represent what is a very complex set of goals, and then how do we on the right side show how those goals have discrete metrics that are aligned to the achievement of those goals, and those metrics enable, again, the last dimension on the slide is to be able to represent the, the progression of, of those types of goals or expectations or targets over time. The time dimension is really important because one of the dimensions of of planning is to not only understand the destination, but understand the timing and the sequence of how the different pieces fit together. Uh, last slide here on the top down view is simply to say, you know, look, in the case of, a, of an individual community, their community can be working on not only the same essential set of goals at their own pace within their own construct, but can have and establish their own metrics and their own target sets associated with and are appropriate to a particular uh, community. So. Even the idea of being able to, to represent similarities and differences across and among the communities is an important element, I think, to Dominic's vision. As we kind of kind of step back and now flip from the, we've been talking about kind of where we want to go, and we haven't really talked about how do we how do the individual or portfolio projects or programs contribute to those outcomes. You kind of need to flip to this kind of perspective of that bottom-up community-driven perspective that Dominic talked about in the sense that what we what we need to do is have constant visibility into how different investments or different programs or different technologies could in fact drive those different outcomes, right? So we're looking at the bottom as being driven by programs or projects. We're looking at programs or projects being targeted and defined to support as many goals as are relevant. They don't have to have any defined notion of exactly what goals or programs are designed for. Some programs may be very singular in nature in terms of outcomes. Some programs could be very broad. Um, by looking at it in this way, analytically, we can look to see you know, what parts of the program are supported by what stakeholders, uh, where funding is coming from, where the outcomes are uh, in terms of of location in terms of specific outcomes that we're looking at. Uh, particularly interesting as we're looking at emerging and smart technologies, and Dominic said this really well, that the technologies in themselves are only smart if they're deployed and located and provisioned in the correct way to address the overall community needs. And so that notion of, of being able to understand technologies, but also understand how those technologies fit into the short, the middle, and the long-term view of the community is really an important element. And then lastly, you know, the key element of comparison of strategies, of collaboration, of debate, is to enable the process to see and evaluate, compare and contrast different courses of action across different community needs and priorities, and to essentially inform what the overall best direction is, and, and to Dominic's point, to drive the overall benefit of the community as being the bottom line objective of the overall program or process. So it allows us to see or understand how the individual components contribute to the endpoint. So in this particular slide, we've, we've kind of moved now to the notion of looking at that bottom up. We've no, we're now looking at uh, courses of action. We're looking at individual activities or projects and where they're located within the region. In this particular example, we're focusing on location of green energy projects. Again, from a, a prototype perspective, we're not looking at it as being um, fully inclusive. You can imagine hundreds if not thousands of activities could be represented on the screen with, but with different, um, basically, segments. And then we're, again, the notion of how these projects or these activities evolve over time is incorporated or encapsulated by the time slider on the bottom of the screen. And individual communities need to be able to understand how different projects contribute and, 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 and work together to achieve goals, and individual communities need to be able to understand how the collection of projects and goals can, in fact, actually contribute toward or help match an overall regional or locate or, or, or community goal. So we're, as we're looking at this bottom of view, we constantly want to be able to compare and contrast the outcomes or the progressions of those outcomes over time against our targets. And then lastly, I think, you know, to tie to Dominic's key idea at the end there is, is Programs are only useful if they can be measured and if the results can be measured and if the programs themselves can be adapted and reshaped and recognize the changing circumstances 
insights gained from some of those programs could change priorities going forward. And I need to look for how do you address in the same systematic way goals were established, the actual measurement or the results or the tracking of progress across individual programs or projects and goals. And in this particular slide, you notice that the blue cells were replaced by essentially color tiles, red, yellow, or green. The, the, the red or yellow or green in this particular case would be uh, effectively defined as maybe a starting point at time zero for where the community might be relative to their end goals. You would expect the cells would change from yellow to green over time during the course of the planning or the overall program. With that, I'd like to kind of just walk back and say, you know, we've obviously covered a, a huge amount of information, and, and I think to, to try to tie the analytic component to Dom's vision, I think, you know, there's kind of four key elements I'll kind of leave you with, is we're looking through this 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 en enormous array of opportunities, this enormous array, array of ideas, this enormous array of issues, you know, there's four key axioms. One is that we need the systematic way to continue to look at the top down or the, the strategic intent or the outcome driven view of where we need to go. We need to look at that through multiple lenses. We need to understand how that appeals to different needs of the community. And we need to be able to to um, debate and compare and contrast different views or different perspectives, both within a lens as well as within the community as a whole. We need to understand the bottom up. We need to understand that you can't get to an endpoint without understanding where you get traction, where real programs or projects exist and how they deliver value to that. We need to understand that the programs and projects are contributing to a community which is also evolving. So the bottom up needs to have a notion of what's actually happening in the baseline or in the community at large and be able to essentially measure performance of the programs in the context of the programs themselves, but also measure performance at the community level in the context of the overall goals and objectives of the community benefit. Because in the end, it's not so much which program delivers that outcome, but how those outcomes are delivered in total to address that, that optimal future that Dom's talking to. With that, I'll kind of shut my part off and, and kind of drop it back to you guys to begin the question and answer session. Thanks so much, Scott. Perfect. So yes, as Scott said, we will be uh, transitioning now into a Q&A with our audience. We have a, some questions that have already come in. A um, couple questions about the slides, if you can download the, the copy, copies of the presentations. And yes, they are already available as PDF documents in the handout panel at the bottom of your control panel. So if you just click the arrow so it's pointing down, you'll see those two slide decks in PDF form. And also a couple questions about whether recording um, this webinar, and yes, we are recording it, and it will be available on um, the webinar event page at meetingoftheminds.org um, tomorrow. So we will also be emailing that out um, if you want to share that with your colleagues. A um, couple questions. So um, I have actually a question for Dom to start. Um, who did you guys first approach to recruit um, among the 22 communities did you first approach the mayors, the chief innovation officers, the chief technology officers, the city council members, and kind of was it different and and varied depending on the governance structure of each of each city? And can you talk a little bit about that kind of initial approach and then you know kind of engaging and bringing them into the process? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, that's a, actually a great question and. I think honestly, I might have cheated a little bit. So for those of you who don't know, I'm actually a recovering city of Phoenix employee. Um, I actually worked with a, a councilman, Councilman Bill Gates. He is now the supervisor for the county. And so um, I actually was working inside the city uh, to try to do a lot of these initiatives. And we realized that we just struggled um, doing it inside. And so that's what gave us the the vision and the motivation to create an organization that could drive this this initiative from outside in, drive technology innovation from outside in. Um, and so I already had a great connection with, you know, then Councilman Gates and the mayor of the city of Phoenix. But also, I used to work for um, ASU has a Center for Urban Innovation. Uh, and through the Alliance for Innovation, they have a network of city managers uh, all across the, the country. And so I became very familiar with all of the city managers around the region. So besides initially first talking to the, the you know, the elected officials with the city of Phoenix, I couched this initiative um, with the administration side, with the city managers, with the, the city staff, because here in 
the greater Phoenix region, we have a council manager form of government. Um, and so I understood that this smart region initiative, the smart city initiative was too important um, to have it with, with political turnover. And so if we could, if we could implement it with the city administration, then it would, uh, it would allow for its sustainability. So I would say besides having a personal connection to the elected officials at the city of Phoenix, um, my first path was down uh, city management. Great. And is there a city manager's association that helped you go from the Phoenix city manager to the smaller city managers? Yeah, the Arizona City County Management Association, ACMA, I hope I got that right, uh, is what really allowed me to accelerate um, kind of my sharing of this this idea and this vision for the region. And, and also uh, the Greater Phoenix Economic Council um, plays a huge role in helping us convene uh, all of the jurisdictions within the Greater Phoenix region. Great. There's a bunch of questions that I'm going to combine from, um, let's see, uh, Hiron, Desai, and um, David Sandel and others. So, and I'd like Scott to answer the second, but first, Dom, can you talk a little bit more about the governance structure and the funding structure? So I know you obviously you set up a nonprofit um, organization, 501c3, so you answered that, but can you talk a little bit about more about how you're approaching how the smart region will be governed and funded. And obviously there will be a dedicated organization, which is your organization. Um, so just talk a little bit more about the funding model and, and if how that t ties in with the governance model as well. Yeah, right now the, the funding model is going to operate um, based on a public private model. And so actually the center for smart cities and regions will be the primary organization um, that helps drive this initiative from Arizona State University, but funding will come both from public city membership as well as industry membership, and then also funding from the university itself. So a three-way kind of pot from public, from private, and from the university to help kind of accelerate uh, the development of this. Uh, as far as um, the stakeholder engagement in the governance structure. Um, IDP and ASU will largely manage the um, city and public engagement, while the Greater Phoenix Economic Council will uh, largely focus on industry uh, engagement through that aspect. Um, we, what we have set up right now is a leadership council, which uh, consists of all the jurisdictions. We then have a um, technology advisory Commission, which will be our industry partners, uh, and it's the industry commission that will help advise the leadership council on where funding uh, should be placed and how we should execute on the digital roadmap. Great. And Scott, do you want to say anything about the funding model for you guys, or uh, given that you're one of the industry partners? Well, I, I think I think the key is that. You know, it's at a really simple level is how do you design the analytics into the fabric of the Dominic's programs and projects to an We lost you, Scott. You lost your voice, so maybe uh you're on mute or your connection was lost, so we'll let you get back to that while we go back to Dom. Um no pressure. So a couple questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Scott. We can't hear you. Um, something happened with your phone. So, um, can you, Scott Pomeroy is asking my, a question. My back. US ex oh, you're there. Hi, Scott. Go ahead. I'm back. The the the, uh, the technology gap of IP-based phones, I think, is what we were seeing there. Um, <laughs> so, I, I, I think I think the key is is that. Um, from our funding model, it's an, it's an implementation answer question actually, which I think centers on the idea of how do you build analytics into the fabric of the different programs or projects that are get enabled through Dom's programs and through his initiatives, and how do those all fit and see and participate within the analytic framework so that effectively it's the fabric. So you know our goal is to enable analytics to be an intrinsic part of how Dominic rolls out and, and manages and measures his programs progression. And so I think, you know, you, you see it as kind of one of those foundational elements that would be part of the funding associated with the activities sponsored as opposed to being viewed as an independent action. 
Great. Thanks for that. Um, Scott Pomeroy is asking over to you, Dom, this question. Could you explain a little bit more about the role of US Ignite regarding the cross-regional sharing of best practices? Will there be co-development of those practices with other regions? Yeah, so the US Ignite Smart Gigabit Communities Initiative is, I believe, an NSF-funded program. Um, it brings together 22 cities from across the country and across the world to help accelerate the development of gigabit applications. Um, now, what that initiative is, it's, right now it's kind of a, a loose organization of cities that are all trying to develop these applications, and we share best practices uh, and share lessons learned uh, together. The goal there is to create a network where you develop a gigabit application within your community that is then shareable across all communities. Um, and so we, the city of Phoenix became a U.S. smart gigabit community, uh, I believe, two years ago. Uh, and that's what brought us into this larger network. But now that this network is established, um, we really want to leverage it in order to um, kind of what we like to say is uh, think think global but act local. You know, how, how can we test, prove, and scale the technologies here uh, and then scale them across across the country through this network. And so that's kind of how we plan to engage the Smart Gigabit Communities Initiative uh, through the Smart Region. Great. Scott, any anything to say about the U.S. Ignite um, initiative from your perspective? No, I think I think I don't think Don Don did did fine on that one. I think. Good, great. Um, so. Uh, I guess a question for you, Dom. What's the timeline for the project? And then, um, second question on that is where, when, and how do startups engage with you? Do you have kind of a, a, a soft landing spot for startups to provide their solutions as um, and partner on some of these initiatives, um, and then funding support for startups to be engaged with uh, with testing and pilots? Yes, so we have a pretty bold um, vision for when we're going to launch this initiative formally. Um, uh, thanks to my good friend lab at ASU, we're trying to um, bring together all of the cities and the industry partners uh, and, and make a formal announcement um, this November. Uh, and so with that announcement will come the formal process for how startups uh, and industry can engage with the Smart Region Partnership. Uh, and Specifically, they will, there will be an Urban Lab, iLab application on the IDP website, on the ASU website, where startups um, can propose potential pilot projects that will then get vetted uh, and bid upon by the regional communities for implementation. Uh, and so I will say uh, keep an eye out for this Urban iLab application on both the IDP and ASU websites. Great. And you mentioned ASU. There's a question um, about – where is this question? There's so many now. Good job, everybody. <laughs> um, could you expand on the role of the university in advancing this work and the, the role of ASU and how – yeah, you mentioned there's a, there's a particular program department that um, on Smart Cities Focus that you're partnering with, but maybe just a little bit more about how you're, how you're partnering and the role of the university. Yeah, definitely. And I'll try to be kind of brief here, but when we were able to get the 21 cities and towns together to basically sign rough letters of intent to create the smart region, I then went to the ASU leadership and I said, we have 22 cities and towns all agreeing to something. This rarely ever happens. We really needed ASU uh, to become more organized and help us become the fundamental research pillar of this new smart region. Uh, it was funny because, you know, NSF grants would come out, Smart Connected Communities grants would come out, and I would have three or four different researchers reach out to me to see if IDP would like to partner on that same grant. And I would ask them, you know, are you talking to each other? And they, they would say, no, we don't even know who that is. And so the development of the Center for Smart Cities and Region was really a concerted effort to centralize and streamline engagement with the university as a whole. So the, the center becomes our one pipeline 
into all the different schools, including engineering, sustainability, computer informatics, and so on. Um, and so the creation of that center will now become the public engagement arm for Arizona State University. Um, it will it will house all of the 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 demand driven research that will come from the demand signals from our community. And then furthermore, the the center will now through the School for the Future of Innovation and Society will actually be offering a curriculum to students who, along the the vertical of smart cities and smart connected communities. Um, the main goal too for the center is to help us be more competitive on these grant applications uh, and help us attract more investment from the federal level into the community through through these these types of grants. Um, and so that's I would say the main role is to help coordinate help connect um, and also provide opportunities for students to engage with the smart region through applied projects. Great. Got another question about the recording of the session. Will it be shared? Yes, of course. We are recording this and we'll be sharing it on the um, webinar event page at meetingoftheminds.org, our website. We will also be emailing that out to all of you who attended so you can share that with colleagues who missed it. So don't worry about that. Um, couple questions. Uh, I feel like you may have just answered this, Dom, but uh, you're now making a lar announcement in November with your corporate and public sector partners. A um, couple, Blake wants to know, do you have any corporate sponsors already on board? Sounds like you do, and they will be announced in November. Am I correct? Correct. Yeah, we're, so we're actively recruiting, um, founding industry partners to come and join uh, the Smart Region Initiative. At this time, I can't name any names, but um, you know we're openly recruiting, and we want the best of the best to come help us build, you know, build this bold vision here in the Greater Phoenix Region. Great. And if people want to approach you, your best email for this is Dominic. My name D O M I N I C at IDP dot city, and it's on the slide deck if you download that. Great. Perfect. Um, and a couple questions. Uh, I think first to, over to you, Scott. Will you be able to track the results of technologies being implemented in the 22 cities? I mean, that seems like that's the whole point. This is a question from Jacques. This seems like this is the whole point of the the platform you guys have built, uh, Asset 360. Do you want to talk about tracking the results of implementation, of technology implementation? Sure. So I'm, I think you know the answer is correct. Yes, it's absolutely the point. Uh, so individual projects or programs outcomes would be measured either in real time if there's some kind of a sensor, some kind of a component that enables that, or some kind of a progress metric that's going to be collected in other forms. The goal, I think, in, in the overall program is, again, to instantiate the idea that, that outcomes are always are constantly measured or tested against goals and targets so that the targets can be adjusted, the outcomes can be measured, progress and investment can be understood. And, you know, to Dominic's point, continue to evolve as a strategy, discover from one piece what, what drives the priority in the next piece of the puzzle. It's a very incremental and a very complex situation. So that measurement component is absolutely intrinsic to the requirements and a key part of a cloud-based initiative is to enable that collaboration, that co those contributions from multiple areas and sources. Great. Um, Dom, you have one minute to answer this question. <laughs> There's two questions about this. Um, from your experience, do you have a sense of the most pressing or immediate constituent municipal needs, either categorically or functionally? And there was a question much earlier in the beginning of the Q&A about a needs assessment. It seems like you guys have are doing that with the roadmap. Am I am I correct, or you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that is correct. We're we're attempting to um, accelerate that process through this roadmap development, and so um, hopefully through that roadmap we will. Um, elucidate you know, some of the most pressing issues and needs that we're facing today, as well as some of the future issues and needs that we foresee in the future. Great, so some of those might be around, there were some questions around leveraging social sustainable procurement, public approaching citizen engagement and education. So some of those will be ass uh, assessed of what bubbles up to the top through the, through the roadmap, correct? Exactly, correct. Great. So we just answered five questions in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Woo! Well, yes. 
great job, um, Scott, Dom. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for all your questions, everybody. We are going to have to wrap up. We're at the top of the hour, so a short survey will pop up once you close your browser. And really appreciate your feedback. We hope to see you at next month's webinar, which we'll be announcing very soon on our website, as well as commenting on our blog um, with original pieces from thought leaders around the world. We publish Monday through Thursday. And hopefully at one of our many upcoming events around North America, we have an event in Cleveland next week, our annual summit, which is our largest event of the year in a different city every year is this November in Sacramento, California, um, where we will also be announcing where our event is next year. Um, so you'll, you should come and, and hear about that as well as more, almost 100 speakers and two and a half days of best practice sharing and solution sharing um, from the stage and in workshop tours. So more information on all of our events and resources available at meaningtheminds.org. And that concludes our session for today. Thank you so much, Dominic and Scott, for your time. And congratulations on a fantastic new initiative. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.